His word is a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. Yeah. Today, I trust that the Lord is going to illuminate your way and bring you revelation for a greater day ahead. I'm Angela Madden. I'm here with Matt Cogley. And yes. I love Fridays with you, Matt. Oh, come on now. <laughs> it's a good day. It's a great day. The weather is beautiful. And, yes. and so speaking about the word of God, I'm, I'm so excited about our guest. We're joined by... Uh, a man by the name of Robert Walgmuth, who is uh, uh, the editor of the Men's Daily Bible. And what's interesting about this is that he's going to share from personal experience of a testimony of his through a loss of his previous wife that led him, you know, to this point. And I just think, Angela, it's amazing how through a loss or difficult situations, it's like God meets us in a way and births something new in our lives that's amazing. He truly does. He takes the dark moments and makes it those budding moments yeah. for us. You know, we believe that today as we talk with Robert, you're going to learn how to significantly uh, impact your life by spending time in God's Word daily. And we'll discuss why it's important now more than ever for men to live boldly and courageously in the face of everyday challenges. Also, Matt and I are going to have an opportunity to minister directly to to you and allow your hearts to be encouraged by what Holy Spirit is speaking today. Matt, I think that the Word of God is mm. literally, I love that scripture, it's a light unto our path, yes. a lamp up for our feet, a lamp, yeah. like it guides us that we would not stumble and it right. brings us into green pastures. Yeah. Amen. I mean, the Word is alive. Yes. It's active. The way I yes. like to look at it is just, you know, in this world that we walk through, it's dark. Right, yes. it can be chaotic, and we can get lost easily yes. in the dark. But His Word, right, is what highlights, brings lights to our path in front of us. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of times we think about, you know, oh, it's so dark in this world around us, and and it it is chaotic mm -hmm. and all of that. But we were given a tool. Yeah to disperse all the darkness. Like we've been given everything we literally need to navigate any dark path or cave that we find ourselves in. And I'm excited to hear from yes. Robert and how he's been chewing on God's word and how it has truly transformed his life. Oh yeah, it's gonna be great. Listen, our next guest has a passion to help men face the challenges of life and equip them to live out their God-given destiny. Robert Walgmuth is a former president of Thomas Nelson Publishers, and he's also a best-selling author and is the general editor of the CSB Men's Daily Bible. He joins us now to encourage men on how we need to step up and live out our faith. Robert, welcome to Hope Today. Oh, Matt, thank you. Angela, thank you. What a joy to be with you. I wish I actually was with you, but we have to we have to do it virtually like this, but it's great to be with you. Thank <laughs> hey, you for inviting me. It's okay. You look great on camera. You know, you look good. <laughs> it's an honor to yeah. have you here with us today. And so I would love to just dive into this real quick. You know, the challenge of this assignment to come along the Bible and write a men's daily Bible. How did this all come about? Well, the forward to this Bible, and it's actually one of those, you know, like they have sometimes in a, in a, in a book, it's not a numbered page, but if you just page in just a few turns, just because you've got a copy there, it's called, it says CSB Men's Daily Bible Forward. And I tell the story about having breakfast in Cleveland many years ago, probably 15 years ago, with one of my closest friends. And we're in a diner, you know, where the waitresses wear white aprons and call you honey and can pour coffee without spilling and all that <laughs> stuff. So we decided that we're going to have breakfast and um, I brought a devotional book and my buddy brought a Bible. So I turned, we ordered breakfast and then I turned to the page for the day in, in the devotional book and it had a text, a Bible text that it suggested. So I told my friend who had his Bible with him, here's, the, here's what the text is. And so he read it from the Bible and then it was my turn to read from the devotional. So I'm reading this and, and I, I want it to be really important, really meaningful. We didn't get together that often. So I really wanted this to be good. And I'm reading it. While I'm reading it, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know what this guy is trying to say. I mean, it sounds good. It's well written, but I'm not quite sure what he's saying. I'm serious. <laughs> so, so I finished reading this, and, and my buddy looked across the table at me, and he said, listen to me. He said, I have no idea what you just read. <laughs> and I said, you know what? I don't have any idea what I just, just read either. And we laughed. 
But then it wasn't fun, funny because we realized that we had just squandered an opportunity mm. to discuss what this text meant to us or could have meant to us, what the Holy Spirit meant by having it in God's word in the first place. Mm. So I resolved, this was a long time ago, I resolved that someday I'm going to put together a, a daily Bible that gives guys an opportunity to to see what it is that the, the Lord that the Lord has for them in His Word. In fact, you know, when Jesus was here, He would often say, "The kingdom of God is like right." And then what He would do is He would tell a story about something that was familiar to these guys, to these people, right? So maybe it was um, farming. So He's got hairs and wheat in Matthew 13, mm -hmm. or leaven the the, the the word of God is like leaven. You put a little leaven and it changes the whole loaf, right? Uh, and he's talking about farming and raising sheep. And it was that was stuff these guys understood, right? So the whole point of this Bible is it's a conversation. It's my favorite way of, of seeing writing. It's, it's me and a guy across the table and a cup of coffee between us. We're reading a Bible text, and then we're saying, all right, the kingdom of God is like, and I'm telling a story, many of them are from my own life, and helping to illuminate the truth of the, of the scripture that we read. And it's, like I said, it's a conversation. There are 260 of these throughout this Bible. They're all linked to a Bible text. So there's nothing inspired Holy Spirit inspired by what I've written. I mean, I'm not, this is not a substitute for God's word for goodness sakes ever try that. Amen. But it's, it's like Jesus would say, well, this, the kingdom of God is like, and here's this verse from the word, this inspired word. And, and here's what this looks like in real life. Mm -hmm. So I talk about, for example, um, remodeling a car. So I used to walk through a Home Depot parking lot, and this guy had restored a 1956 Ford pickup. And it was like that turquoise color that Ford always used back in the 50s. And and it's called a relationship fixer fixer upper. That's the name of this daily insight. And I talk about Joseph and his brothers and this broken relationship that these guys, but the metaphor that I use is a rusted out pickup truck and how this guy restored it. So it's like um it's stuff that guys would understand. It's speaking their language. It's talking about restoration of a 56 Ford pickup truck or sports or raising kids or the struggle that a man feel, uh, faces in terms of temptations. It's all kinds of things like that, but it connects to the scripture so that like Jesus would say, the kingdom of God is like, and then he'd tell a story. So that's my goal. My goal in, in creating this project First of all, was to get guys into the word mm -hmm. and then help them to understand what this Bible text means. I'm, I'm a layman. My wife, Nancy, doesn't like when I say this, but I, I am an ordinary guy. I really have no business except that I love God's word. Yes. I'm a businessman. I deal with temptations and frustrations and struggles and victories every single day, like all men, right? Mm -hmm. And so my goal is to look across the table, a cup of coffee between us, and help a guy understand God's word. And 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 honestly, in fact, uh, if you turn to the copy you've got there back on page 1444, I think it is, it's a daily insight called The Throne. Mm. And, and really, I guess in many ways, that's the most important insight for the day. What I tell in that piece called The Throne is the morning that I walked through my living room in 2014, the day after I had buried my wife of almost 45 years. Mm. And she was faithful. I mean, we were both early morning people. She was even earlier morning than I was, dark 030, we'd call it. And I'd walk through the living room on my way up to my study to write books, to write Christian books. And here's my wife sitting on her chair and she had this red chair, that's the throne. And she had God's word open on her lap just for the sake of loving God's word and knowing God's word and hearing God's voice. So I walk up to my office every single day. Now it's the morning after we've placed her casket in the ground. 
and I walk past this chair, and it's empty, and the Lord speaks to me almost audibly, wow. and he says to me, Robert, you have been a lazy man. You have let your wife spend time in, in my word, in my holy word, and you have by bypassed this opportunity yourself. It's, it's time you make a change. And that was, as I said, that was in November of 2014. And by God's grace, this is, this is not boasting. This is confessing, actually. But by God's grace, I haven't missed maybe three or four mornings in the last 10 years. But it was inspired by my wife, who, who knew what it was to soak in God's word, who knew what it was to follow Christ and to listen to his vo voice by way of his word. And it changed everything for me. So out of that experience came the writing of the Men's Daily Bible. Mm -hmm. And it has been so much fun to interact with guys now who are acting like this Bible is a conversation between him and me. And we're talking about God's word. We're talking about what it means to walk by faith, mm -hmm. but live by the grace of God. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. we, we have this problem. We have a darkness problem and we have a sin problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, just turn on the news. Let it run for five minutes, and you realize we have a darkness problem and a sin problem. And guess what, this, what the solution is for that? It's in Psalm 119. You quoted it at the, at the beginning. It's a lamp in the darkness, yes. and it's a light for sin. It, it, it exposes our sin and draws us to the Savior who died to save us from our sin. Mm. So it's pretty simple stuff, but I'm so thrilled to be able to have the opportunity, to have had the opportunity to write the notes in this Bible. And my prayer, my hope, is that guys all over the world will be inspired by it and that they'll do it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. You know, somebody said every life decision or every life change begins with a single decision. You know, whether it's going on a diet uh, or starting to work out or reading God's word. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you miss a day, don't worry. There's, there's tomorrow, start again. So. In fact, I mentioned my wife. She read through the Bible coast to coast 35 times. And and her life reflected that. I got a text this morning from a woman who actually was a television anchor at a network station in Boston, Massachusetts, whose life was radically changed because she watched Bobby. She yeah. listened to her. Bobby was her Bible teacher. So Bobby had that kind of impact on people. Why? Because she knew God's word and she followed uh, what the Lord had to say to her in, in his word. That's good. Robert, I would love to ask you a question. You know, I'm sure this was no easy test. It's, it's already challenging enough, right? Trying to be in God's word daily and make it part of your routine, part of your life, let alone mm -hmm. writing to it. You know, did you face challenges of, man, I want to give up. I kind of want to quit. And how would you help encourage somebody that's just kind of in that same state? It's just easy for uh -huh. them to quit and not get into the word. Yeah. That's really, that's a great question. And that's, that's really at the core of all of this. And it's, it's a word that uh, sometimes people avoid, but it's called discipline, <laughs> where you do what you know you must do, even yes. if it's tough. So don't you love watching marathon races? Speaking of Boston, mm. those guys didn't just start running yesterday. They've been training for this day after day. And, and that's really what this is. It's, it's called self-talk. So um, Martin Lloyd-Jones, the great uh, Welsh preacher from the last century, talked about the danger of listening to yourself rather than speaking to yourself, self-conversation. So, you know, you're, you're lying in bed, it's dark 030, you're, you're hearing a voice that says, look, you, you've worked hard enough, stay there, you deserve to sleep in. Instead of listening to that voice, you speak back to it. And you say, you know what? I'm getting out of bed. I'm not going to listen to. The, I'm not going to obey obey the voice that I just heard. I'm going to. I'm going to get out of bed. I'm going to pour a cup of coffee, and I'm going to sit down with God's word. And I'm going to say, Lord, speak to me today. I need to hear your voice. I've got this sin problem. I'm surrounded by this darkness problem, and I need this lamp to my feet and light to my path. Yes, that's good. I, I love a section um, towards the closing of the Bible, and you have a a whole section on Q and A. And you were saying earlier, it's like, you know, you got to speak men's languages. And so what's maybe one of those questions, you know, that you, you knew needed to be in there and 
you know, <laughs> what was the answer and solution to them? Well, uh, actually, this is a great format, and I'm actually turning to it, so forgive me, turning to it in my own copy here, because I'd love to be able to just pick one out. Uh, honestly, that's a, Q&A is a wonderful way of learning, mm -hmm. right? So if, if you have a question, God's word has the answer. And so each of these questions and answers are linked to a text, a Bible text. So who cares what I think, right? <laughs> it's really what God thinks. Yes. And, it, and it's, it's fun stuff like, where is Noah's Ark now? So <laughs> I, I looked into the answer to that question or uh, why do we have to follow so many rules? And this is out of the book of Joshua. So it's, wow. it's uh, actually, I first started to write this called questions kids ask. And I thought to myself, what am I saying? These are questions I have. These are questions men, dads have. Mm. So uh, that's, it's, it's a, again, meant to be a conversation, an exchange between the reader and me. I love that part of it. Uh, how would you speak to somebody? Maybe there's a guy that's out there that's just struggling to even want to get into the word. You know, what, I know you said discipline. What's that look like for you? How would you encourage somebody if this is what we need to do daily? Yeah. Um, I know this sounds really simplistic, Matt. You just have to do it. Mm -hmm. Nike, I mean, how genius is that swoop? <laughs> just do it. Yeah. You know, it's, if I'm if I'm looking across the table at the guy and I'm saying, you're a busy man. You got lots of stuff, including trying to raise your kids to love the Lord and to be a, a great husband to your wife. Yes. But listen to me, just do it. And honestly, here's what's fun about this. Once you start spending daily time in God's word, it becomes its own reward. So the joy, I mean, first of all, it feels like discipline. And then it feels like joy. Then it mm. feels like Yes. That was wonderful. I'm, I'm not going to miss another morning. Wow. So it's rather than obligation, it becomes privilege. So mm -hmm. you do it, and then it becomes a habit, a good habit, and it becomes its own reward. So the joy is in actually doing it, and you're motivated to do it again. Amen. That's so good. Well, Robert, I want to thank you so much for your time, for your wisdom, your, your sacrifice, and, and even your discipline in, in coming up with this men's huh. daily Bible. Hey, Father's Day is coming up. I encourage all of our viewers today, maybe grab this for your husband or a man of God that's in your life. It will truly bless them and encourage them. Robert, thank you so much for being on Hope today. You're welcome, Matt. Thanks, Angela. Good to be with you guys. Well, when we return, we're going to have a personal time of ministry just for you, where we believe Holy Spirit will speak direct to your heart. We'll be right back. When we think of the New Testament disciples, it's easy to idealize their walk with God, but they were just like you and me. They needed a great deal of help to stay on the right path. We're excited to announce that Tom Hollis has a new devotional coming out this June. Spirit Walk follows the apostles as they attempt to follow Christ, as reflected through the book of Acts. Their experiences can be ours as well. All we need to do is follow the Spirit. Enjoy 40 short devotional entries and discover how the journey of the apostles relates to us today. Spirit Walk includes a daily verse, prayer, and space to journal your personal reflections. Be among the first to receive Tom's devotional, which releases June 12th. Ask for your copy of Spirit Walk when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. Well, we just heard a powerful interview with Robert and his conviction to encourage men to study God's word. Can I tell you, his word is truly a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. You know, sometimes we can hear these scriptures and we're wondering, well, what does that actually mean? It means that God's word, the one who is the word, Christ himself, will illuminate the path before you. Yes. He will guide you and direct you. If you're having questions about what should I do or what is the, my purpose in life, he has the answer. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. What I love about Jesus is he came and he lived so we could know how to live. And in his death and resurrection, he gave us the most beautiful gift, 
Holy Spirit. Yes. In Jesus' own words, he refers to Holy Spirit as our guide, our helper, our comforter, the spirit of truth. Mm. And so today, Holy Spirit wants to guide, to lead, to comfort, and to bring you into truth. I don't know what you're facing today, but Holy Spirit does. I don't know what darkness surrounds you or what you've been pulled out of mm -hmm. or what you're afraid you're going into, but Holy Spirit knows. And I dare to believe that even now, Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart. He is the promise from Jesus to point us back to Jesus himself, yes. who in turn calls us back to the heart of the Father. Where are you today? What does your relationship with Jesus look like today? Do you find yourself waiting for the next doom and gloom moment for that boot to drop? Do you feel anxious or do you feel kind of confident that you're walking with the Lord? Regardless of where you are, Holy Spirit wants to walk you into greater depths. Today, we encourage you to take one more step. Yes. If you have not yet said yes to Jesus, if you are like many who are saying, listen, I was a choir boy, I did that thing, and you know, I think I know the big man upstairs, mm -hmm. but you're not having a daily relationship, a walk with Jesus, can I tell you, Romans implores us that we must confess with our mouth that he is our Lord and Savior, that he died and that he rose again, and he did it all through the cross for us. And when we simply acknowledge and we say yes to that gift of Jesus, he makes eternal plans for us. Mm -hmm. He prepares a place for us when this life here is done, and he turns those things which were intended for evil for good Amen. here on earth. So today, if you have not made that decision for Jesus, if you're uncertain, you, you think you're on the edge or you think maybe having served in your, as a choir boy that that did something for you, let me tell you, make it a certain reality that Christ is your hope alone. And say a simple prayer, ask Jesus to come into your heart Give him lordship over your life, which means give him all access pass to mm. everything that you have and that you do and that you are. Acknowledge that you are sin filled because we are. We all fall short and ask him for his divine forgiveness. When you do this, Romans tells us that as you confess, he makes you brand new. Mm. And behold, the old is gone and a supernatural wonder happens, and you are made brand new. Today, we pray that you have made that decision and have said that simple prayer of accepting Jesus. And if so, we would love to hear from you. Call us at 888-665-4483 so that our prayer partners can come into alignment and rejoice with you. Or you can email us at prayer at ctvn.org. Today is the day of salvation for you. And truly, Matt, to bring us all into mm -hmm. a greater measure of light. Yeah, so good. You know, I, I love today's episode and listening even to Robert just encouraging us to be in the word of God. I feel like he's like a grandfather. You know, like I, I could sit, at, <laughs> sit in the living room and just kind of listen to him, you know, his wisdom and his encouragement. But Angela, I'm just thinking about just the word and how it transforms us. And one of the benefits of the word of God is once we really get to know God and his character and his promises for us, we understand the power yeah. of the word of God that we get to carry, you know, and the Bible tells us, I mean, the power of life and death yes. are in the word, but through our words. I mean, even in the beginning, yeah. God said, let there be. And I love that. It just, it just gives us revelation and encouragement yes. through his word when we know it, that we get to speak to that darkness that's in our lives. We yes. can speak to that mountain, to that situation, to your finances, to your health, Angela. Yes. You know, Matt, I love that you said earlier that it's alive, it's mm -hmm. active. His word is alive and active. And it truly does produce for us greater measure of life. Yeah. You know, I think we always have these questions and we want to go to our best friend who we think is pretty wise mm -hmm. <laughs> or mm -hmm. to Google, but we got God. Come you on know now. what I mean? Like you, he has literally given us this word, this yes. instruction manual, manual for everything right. in our life. And right. when we go to it, we will 
will find answers yeah. and truth and hope. So good. Yeah. One thing that I, okay, we got to hit on this because he talked about discipline. Yes. And the way Robert put it, and what, what a great way is it's discipline. It's, it's doing something that obviously our flesh yeah. fights against, does not desire, but out of it comes the truest joy. Let's speak to that. Yes. I mean, what does that look like for you? A daily discipline. Yes. You know, I think you're right. Like anything, working out, anything that's actually good for you, mm -hmm. your flesh really actually oh, resists. <laughs> Lord, help us. I need to get into the gym you know here. What I mean? you're, you're trying to push away the salad and go for the cake, yeah, right? Yeah. But like, it is one of these things that as, as soon as you find yourself there, mm. as soon as you're talking to Holy Spirit and asking him, help me to understand what I'm reading. Yeah. There is life that comes Come and on. you suddenly wonder, well, why was I, why was I delaying mm. this moment where I literally feel refueled and yeah. encouraged? Yeah, yeah. I think when it comes to discipline too, is where the struggle is, is, is you know, the world teaches us for just instant, instant answers, yes. right? And, and yes, we can have instant answers and results in the word of God, yes. but it's a daily practice, yes. right? It's gotta become a lifestyle. It's gotta become who you are, yes. you know, and, and don't you feel like that's what the struggle is sometimes? We, oh, absolutely. There's that competition of feeling like, but I need the answer right, right here now. now and I gotta be able to see it. Yes, we have a hard time being still. We have a hard yep. time even yep. just listening, you yep. know? And so it is, it's hard for us to be still and read something yeah. and not get that instant. But truly when we commit ourselves to it, yes. it's just like anything. You watch something long enough, honey, mm -hmm. it's gonna get in you mm -hmm. and you're gonna become it. <laughs> yeah, I know, you're so right, I love that. So be still. I mean, that's what the Bible tells us. Be still and know who he is. It's in those moments when you can kind of just quiet yourself, right? Tune out the best that you can. I know even for me personally, it's a struggle, right? Like even this morning, all three of my kids woke up early and I'm like, Lord, how am I supposed to find time with you right now? So it was in my car ride on the way here to the TV station. Be still and know. You know, whatever it is that you might be going through in your life, whatever challenges, thoughts that are arising, stressful moments, the adversity that comes, just be still, quiet yourself, get into God's word. It's not just about reading. It's about drawing close unto him so he can draw closer unto you. His word is about a relationship to know who he is, the character of God. And through that, that's what gives us the greatest hope in our lives for today.